This is Mark Leapart, continuing on with the Big Fix Foundation series. In this session, I'll be covering patching of Linux systems. Let's get started. So I'll be covering these topics today. Patch dashboard, determining patch relevance, using baselines, using multi-package baselines, and using patch policies in the web UI. The dashboard. I like using the dashboard. It uh, gives me a very quick view of what's relevant for my environment. Uh, so in this particular example, I know I've got two critical patches. Uh, the lower left-hand corner always, always shows you what's critical and how many endpoints need to have that critical patch. In the upper left-hand corner, it gives me information on what for patches for CentOS, um, I'm looking at just one specific site, uh, how many patches are relevant out there, how many endpoints do I have. Um, so you get to see just you know a good view of what's, what's relevant for your environment. Uh, so check it out, and uh, I like to use it. You might like to use it too. Uh, looking at recent content, uh, there's all sorts of ways that you can find content within the Big Fix world. This is a, a very simple example showing uh, I'm in the patch management domain. I've drilled into OS vendors. I'm looking at my CentOS uh, site, and I'm looking at recent content. And I can see that I've got 20 patches that are relevant for my environment. And these could be anything. They could be CentOS 5, CentOS 6, CentOS 7, CentOS 8, whatever uh, I've subscribed to. Uh, in my environment, I only have CentOS 7, so uh, it's going to show me the CentOS 7 stuff. Um, as you can see we have no CentOS 5, no CentOS 6. Um, but So recent content could include those, so be aware of that. If you're on the web UI, you can do something very similar to that. Uh, so in this example, I'm looking at the filter for Linux, and I put in a release date of 12, 10, 19. And I can see that Big Fix returned six patches that are relevant for my environment. I don't know what their uh, severity is, didn't filter on it. Uh, so if I wanted to see that, I would either click on this button and expand it, or click on a patch specifically and drill into it to see it. Determining patch relevance. So patch relevance is the same on all operating systems. Uh, all relevant statements must be true before you can execute the action. So in this example, uh, relevant statement one, I'm looking at the Big Fix client version has to be greater than 8.2 in some number, and the operating system has to start with Linux CentOS 7. Um, so we'll say that's true. We go to the next statement, and in this statement, I'm looking for a 64-bit operating system. Okay, so that's true. Uh, the third piece of relevance here is very detailed. I'm looking for a very specific version of Firefox and I'm also checking it against the architecture to make sure that I've got the right architecture and I'm gonna grab the right RPM and this data is all being pulled from the RPM database. So provided all three of these statements are true, I can do the action and remember that when Big Fix does a fixlet, we go through the relevance once, run the action, and then Big Fix goes through the relevance again. And more than likely, uh, statement number three, uh, usually the most complex statement, is now going to evaluate to false. And Big Fix would mark that endpoint as fixed. So that's patch relevance. Applying a Linux patch. Uh, you can do this to one machine or multiple machines, it, you know, however you want to do it. Uh, but you can locate the fixlet. Uh, this is just one example. I mean, there's all sorts of ways to do this. Uh, locate the fixlet for the patch that you need to apply. Take a look at the general description. Are there any notes or notices, uh, errata that you need to pay attention to? Uh, then you decide whether or not you need to test this patch <coughs> or 
or just apply the patch. So in the Linux, Unix world, you have the ability to test because uh, a lot of times there's requisites out there that you may not know about. And uh, if the requisites aren't met, the patch won't be able to be installed. So you can always run a test first and it will go through, basically do a software test to see, does it have all the requisites? Can it do the install uh, while just playing in, the, in a kind of like in a uh, sandbox world of uh, software? It doesn't really do anything. It just goes through the motions to see if it can do it. And if it completes, then that pretty much tells you that you can go ahead and install that patch. Um, uh, that is, uh, typically there's two actions with these, uh, action one and action two. Action one does the install, action two does the test. Um, so you've selected your patch, you decided you're going to apply it, uh, you take that action, you select all the various parameters, how many targets you want, or you want to target by group, and let it rip. And uh, it'll go off and install that patch. Baselines. Uh, you're going to use the console to create a baseline. And remember, baselines are a snapshot in time. Uh, so when you add fixlets to a baseline, uh, big fix basically just takes a snapshot of whatever that fixlet is at that point in time and puts it into a baseline. Um, there's all sorts of ways of doing this. This is my way of doing it. Uh, expand fixlet only, do it by site, and in here I'm looking for CentOS patches. I review if there's any criticals, I grab all that I want, and so that's basically I'm going to right click on the patches I want and add to a new baseline. I give that baseline a name and a description, and then make sure that you validate that the components all have default actions. Uh, baselines, everything has to have a default action or it's not going to work right for you. And then you click OK, and it'll create that baseline. Uh, second section here, I'm going through the same process again, but now I'm looking for important patches. Uh, again, I select them, uh, but this time I'm going to right-click and add to an existing baseline. And so I'll just locate my newly created baseline from my previous step and go ahead and add them in. Again, validating that all the components have a default action. It creates my baseline, and uh, remember, baselines uh, take a little bit longer to evaluate out there because uh, when Big Fix sends it out, uh, that if I am installing 20 patches, uh, Big Fix basically smushes all of the relevant statements together and runs through them, and that could take a few more milliseconds to uh, to run on an endpoint report back. Multi-package baseline, uh, again, in the console. What's the difference between a regular baseline and a multi-package baseline? So multi-package baselines are designed for the Linux world uh, where when I install just a regular baseline or I install a single patch, uh, I'm making a, a single yum call. Uh, so if I'm installing a single patch, that's a single yum call uh, over and done. If I'm installing a baseline with 10 patches, uh, that's going to be 10 individual yum calls that are going to get, going to get made. When I create a multi-package baseline, this is instructing uh, Big Fix and the endpoint to, hey, um, we're installing a bunch of stuff here, but I want you to install it all as one yum call. So if I'm installing 10 patches and I'm using multi-package baselines, instead of a standard baseline, then Big Fix is going to install all 10 at once with a single yum call, and it's much, much faster than uh, doing it in a standard baseline. But the caveat is that if you need to uninstall a patch that you installed with multi-package baseline, yum has no clue that you how to break out a single patch out of a, a multiple block. Um, so it's going to want to uninstall everything and install at, at once. So all 10 of those are going to want to come out. Uh, so know that going forward that uh, uninstalling stuff that you installed with a multi-package baseline uh, might not give you the results that you were looking for. But it is considerably faster than uh, doing a standard baseline. 
And once you've created the multi-package baseline, uh, you're basically going to put in the, the patches that you want the same way you do for a regular baseline. It's just that you've bookended the uh, baseline with two additional options. Uh, enable multi-package baseline installation feature for whatever OS that you're doing it for. And then at the end of the baseline, you have multi-package baseline installation feature. So that's, uh, you, that's the, the bookend, the beginning end and the end. And that will uh, create for you a multi-package baseline that you load up using your, all the same tools that you did creating a regular baseline. Uh, applying a baseline, multi-baseline web UI. Uh, these can be applied. You can't create, but they can be applied. So after you log into the web UI, you open the apps drop down, look for custom content, filter on baseline, locate your baseline, deploy your baseline as you always did. Uh, so nothing changes there. Uh, so you can deploy these just as, just as easily in using the web UI or the standard console. Rolling back a Linux patch. Um, okay, so you can do this against Oracle Linux, RHEL, and CentOS. And here we're using the YUM transaction history dashboard. Um, so this gets back to my previous statement on using baselines and multi-package baselines. Uh, so if I'm using a, an individual or using a standard baseline, uh, all of these patches would be, in, would be viewed as a single object that I could more than likely back out. Uh, if I'm doing a multi-package baseline and I install 10 objects at that time, uh, Yum's going to want to undo all 10 of those. So be aware of that. And your mileage will vary on the OS's ability to back something out. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work right. Um, so you need to pay attention to that. Patch policy. Uh, so patch policy is available in the web UI, and this is the web UI version of baselines. Uh, these are primarily uh, set for uh, set it and forget it. Uh, so once you have installed patch policy, uh, it's nothing to install. You just use it. Um, once you've created a patch policy and added stuff to it, and you've set up a schedule, you've set up a patching schedule, you've set up a refresh schedule. This will just run until your big fix server is no longer running or you stop it. Um, so these are a great way to uh, set up, set it and set it and forget it type of uh, patching processes, make it 100% automated. And I'll go through this uh, in the demo, how you set this up. And that covers are the, the topics I wanted to cover. Uh, patch dashboard, determining patch relevance, using baselines, multi-package baselines, and the web UI. Thank you very much.